Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at implementing the observer pattern. So we're going to implement the observer pattern from scratch, so to speak. And in fact I'm going to show you this within the context of the model view controller pattern. But don't worry if you don't know model view controller because we're not going to be dealing with um, a whole lot of specific MVC stuff in this tutorial. We're just going to look at the observer pattern. On the other hand, if you've already watched the MVC tutorials and you want to know how to implement the listening aspect of it, then this is also a great tutorial for you, hopefully. So in model view controller, we have um, classes that are part of the model and classes that are part of the view and classes that are part of the controller. And back in the model view controller tutorial, um, to keep things as simple as possible, I actually created three classes called Model View and Controller. Now what I want to do in this tutorial is I want the controller to be able to listen to the view. And although we're dealing with MVC, Model View Controller here, this stuff will be basically the same regardless of what classes were involved and whether it was to do with MVC or not. So the basic idea is that we have one object in this case the controller and we want it to be able to listen to another object to observe another object um, which in this case is the view so our controller is going to be the listener or observer and the view is going to be what we call the subject in observer pattern terminology it's going to be the thing that gets listened to and uh, to kind of make this a bit more plausible what I did was I've created a little application here and a view just presents this sort of form which has a name and a password and we can imagine that this is some sort of login form so if I fill in my name here and a password and then click OK uh, it comes out down here in the console and what's happening is at the moment this is all being handled in the view so the view of course uses uh, this, this, is, this stuff here is just all the sort of um, quite complex, complicated grid bag layout stuff to lay out the controls on the screen but we're not going to worry about that here. So the view listens to actually the OK button on the screen. We've got this button and the view itself is listening to that button and when you click the button what happens is basically this action perform method gets invoked and this is all happening within the view. This method gets invoked and that's just outputting some text. Now what would like to happen is when um, when the user fills in that form and clicks OK in the view, we want the view to fire an event which we will call let's say a login event because the user is trying to log in. So the view is going to say OK the user's tried to log in will fire a login event and we want the controller class in this case to then be notified that a login event has occurred. We want the, the controller to listen to the view and when the view fires a login event the controller gets that message, it receives the event and it, it also gets passed some information which in this particular case will tell us what was entered uh, into the form. So let's kind of take this step by step. We've, we've got our two objects, we've got our subject and our observer and we want to say something like view dot now we could have a method here called add listener if we anticipated having a, a um, whole list of listeners that could be listening to the view uh, which is usually the case in Swing and by the way we're not going to use any of the standard Swing classes here because I want to show you this from scratch so to speak. But in, for example, Android programming, there you tend to get a lot more set listener type methods that just allow you to have one listener to, to the subject, and that's fine too. And for simplicity, let's just use the set um, listener type of terminology. So I want to be able to say um, view.setListener, or well, actually let's, let's call this some particular kind of listener, like set login listener and we want to pass it something there that's going to listen to 
login event. So if the user logs in, the view will tell that listener that a login event has occurred. So saying view.setLoginListener. And now we need to pass in some kind of login listener. Let's say, uh, let's call this, um, well, what we want to pass in is going to be the controller, actually. We're going to pass in the controller here. So what we're trying to say, although it won't compile yet because we've got bits missing, but we're trying to say view.setLoginListener, pass in the controller. So we're trying to say, if a login event occurs in the view, tell the controller about it. Set the controller as a listener to the view. Now, how, how are we going to make this work? Well, um, let's click the error here. And uh, we could go to create method, but it doesn't quite know what type we want to pass in to this method. In fact, what we want to do is we don't want to have it so that you've got to pass this controller to set login listener. We want to abstract the controller away behind an interface. So we, we want to say um, that whatever object we pass in here implements some interface. And that, uh, that object will therefore have some particular method that the view could then run if that login event occurs. So let's go ahead and craft that interface now. And although the precise details of this will differ depending on exactly what you want to achieve, you're going to basically need the kind of methods and interfaces and objects that we're going to look at here. So I'm going to um, right click in my view package here and I'm going to go to new interface and I'm going to create an interface called login listener and this is going to define the idea of a class that could listen to login events, that could receive login events, which in this case is going to be our controller, but that's kind of incidental to this. So I'm calling it login listener. And notice I've talked a lot, but I haven't actually typed much code. So I'm trying desperately to explain, but actually um, we're not having to do much yet. It's not actually not as complicated as I'm probably making it sound. So we've got a public interface login listener, and I want to give this one method and I want to call it something like public void login performed login performed now uh, let's, let's just leave it with that for the moment because um, we're going to have to change uh, a couple of things later on but let's, let's leave it with that so we've got a very simple interface called something or other listener with just one method called typically something or other performed or it could be something or other occurred or something like that. Now, let's make the the observer of, um, class, the class that we want to be on observer, let's make it implement this, this interface. So in this case, I've said that I want my controller here. This is going to be the observer. This is going to receive login events. Let's go to this class. And I just want to say here, this is my ob controller class. It's very simple. I just want to say implements login listener. And login listener is this interface I've just defined with one method. So if I do that and I add the import for it here, then I'm going to get this error. And if I click on the error, I can go to add unimplemented methods. And now we've just we've just got to have this one login perform method. So all all of all this interface is doing is saying that our implementing class has got to have that method so now it does have it now what that means is um, that this view.setLoginListener could just expect any object that implements that interface which controller now does controller implements this login listener interface and that means that controller has this login perform method which is great so let's click this uh, error here and implement set login listener in our in our subject the thing that fires the event so I go to create method set login listener in view here we are and now at the moment it expects a controller but we don't want to pass in a controller we want to be able to pass in anything that implements the login listener interface so let's change this to login listener and let's call this login listener. That's the name of the argument. 
And what we want to do with this method is just store a reference to the object that we pass in. So I'm going to go to the top here in my view class. This is my subject, remember. We've got the subject and the observer. And I'm going to give it a private login listener. And again, remember, this, this is my interface type. It's this here, login listener. So private login listener, let's call that login listener. And of course it will be called in, it will be called whatever kind of listener you want to create. Not necessarily a login listener, some, some kind of listener. And we, we'll go down to the method now and we'll say this dot login listener equals login listener. So this is, this is just basic Java. Well, not really basic Java, slightly intermediate sort of Java, but it's just the idea that we are, um, we're just passing in an object and then storing a reference to it in the private, in a private variable up here. So let's save this and this now compiles. So what we're doing now is, um, if we go back to application, now we are passing a reference to the controller, to the view, but in such a way that the view doesn't know that it's a controller. It doesn't really care what it is. All the view knows is that whatever we're passing in, which happens to be this controller, has a method called login performed, which indeed it does. We implemented it in the controller. And it knows that because set login listener in the view expects something of the type login listener, which is our interface. So all it knows, all it knows in the view now is that this login listener, which is stored, which is now stored here, we've got a reference to it here. This, whatever this login listener is, it has a method called action performed. And we can call that method in the view. So let's go ahead and call it. Let's go to the point in the view where something will happen if someone clicks that button on the form. So we know that in the view, I mean, the whole idea of, of the subject um, in the uh, observer pattern, the thing that triggers the event, is that, as we said in the last tutorial, things, or the tutorial before maybe, things can happen in it that you then want other classes to respond to. And in this case, the thing that happens in our subject, which happens to be our view class here, is that someone clicks the button. And when they click the button, this method is run. And that was also sorted out using the observer pattern, actually. And this stuff runs in here. And what, actually, what we actually want to happen now is we want, when the button is clicked, we want this method to then run that, that code, the login perform method, in the listener. So let's do that. And what we'll say is, now we don't know if someone's going to have called this set login listener method or not. They might, they might not have. So let's check to make sure that the login listener is not null, is not equal to null. Because if no one has called set login listener, then login listener here will have its default value, which being a private instance variable will be null. So we'll check that it's not null before we try to use it. And then we'll say login listener dot uh, login performed. So the only methods it has here, notice, are stuff that all objects have in Java plus this login perform method. So we'll actually call that. And now so that we can see when this method's called, let's go to our controller here and put in a sysout, sysout login event received. So we're kind of using the terminology here. Uh, and we're just saying login event received. So what we've done here is is it's actually very, very powerful. We've um I'm kind of laboring this point just because I know it gives uh gives beginners a lot of trouble and it, it did me as well when I was a beginner with this stuff. But what we've done is we've connected these two arbitrary objects in such a way that this object, this class the um, here didn't even know that this class existed when we implemented it. We've separated them cleverly using this interface so they're not tightly coupled and we could we could use this 
stuff, the stuff that we've implemented in our subject here, with different listeners of all different kinds of classes. All the all the listener has to do, all the observer has to do, is implement that interface, and then you can pass it in as a listener. Okay, so let's just see if this works, and I'll run it, and let's uh, let's just click OK actually, and then we get login event received. So although this is the view, the view generates this view that you're looking at now, this form. When I click OK on the form, it's the controller, the, the, the actual thing that's listening, that's then outputting this text down here. OK, so that's, that's great. And uh, it's just not any use yet, because we also want the controller to receive information about what's happened. And that's not always the case. This might be enough for some circumstances. You might just want to say, look, something's happened. But in this case, we, we want to say something's happened, and here's the information that goes with it. So let's consider how we can pass information now uh, from our view class here to our controller class, from the subject to the listener. And what all we want to do is we want to make login perform take some parameters, basically. So we could just pass parameters. We could pass password and name to login performed. And we could, in the interface here, here we could make this take parameters, which would force implementing classes to accept parameters. And then we'd be able to output the name and the password here. But there's a kind of traditional way of doing this, involving an object, which you call an event. And again, Swing has a kind of built-in event uh, object hierarchy, but we're not going to use it here because I want to show you this kind of from, from first principles. What we're going to do is we're going to create a kind of a bean, which is also what we call our event, which, uh, which uh, can hold the information we want to transmit. And the information we want to transmit is simply here. In this case, it's a username and a password. So bearing that in mind, let's go ahead and implement that. So in my view here, I'm going to right click and go to new class. And I'm going to call this, let's call it form event, or maybe to be more precise, login form event. So kind of traditionally, these, these classes are called something or other event. And we click finish. I don't want a main method in here. Click finish. And then the information that we want this to be able to store is private string name in this case, and private string password. Now for convenience, let's uh, create a constructor that can accept the name and the password. So I'm going to right click and go to source, generate uh, constructor using fields, make sure those are ticked and click OK. So now we've got a convenient constructor. I'll get rid of this super, call to super, because that's superfluous actually, and do control shift F to format it. And now I'm just going to click down here, right click and go to source, generate getters and setters and tick those and generate getters and setters for them. So this is uh, a bean class. You know, a bean is just something that stores some data and has getters and setters for that data. And in this context, we're calling it an event class because we're going to use this bean to transmit information about an event. So we call this something or other event. But all it is is a very simple class that can store a little bit of data in a standard way. Now let's go to the login listener interface and change this login performed so that it accepts a login form event, which I'll call event. Or I could just call it E or something really. And I'll save that. An error now comes up in any implementing classes, which happens to be my controller. So let's change this method here to match the one in the interface. So we have uh, login form event event. Save that. And now in the, uh, let's have the import, control shift O. So we've got rid of the errors there. And now we've got um, an error in our subject class, the class that raises the event or fires the event. Because we have to pass data to this now. And actually we, we could, separately declare the necessary object. But what I could do is in login perform, I could actually just say new login form event and just pass in using the constructor, the name and the password. There we go. 
and so we're, we're immediately creating an object of the login form event type, giving it the right data and passing it to login performed. And now in my listener, now I've got that information. So I can say login event received plus event dot get name and plus let's put some punctuation in there plus event dot get password and now let's see if that works if I run this it's always good to check that your application responds sensibly if you've got an empty form and someone clicks OK and in this case I just get the punctuation coming out uh, which I'll do for the moment I'll fill in something John and password and click OK and now we can see that the listener is receiving um, it's receiving, actually I haven't really got very good punctuation there, let's change that slightly. It's receiving some information from the form, which is great. Uh, and I think there's just one, maybe one more thing that I want to say about this probably. Maybe two more little things. One is that, uh, because you'll probably see this quite often and it might confuse you, one is that we could create a separate method in the subject class, the class that fires the event. So here we're having to do this. We're checking if the login listener is not null and we're calling the method of the login listener. What I could do is I could put this stuff in its own method. So I could say public void fire login event. So it sounds, it sounds kind of like very intimidating language, fire login event, what's it mean? But actually it's, this is pretty simple and fire login event is going to take my login form event, event object and all it's going to do is it's going to do this code here. So let's just take this out of here, paste it in here and now in here where the event is created because this, remember this code is cool if the user clicks the OK button on the form. Then I'm going to say fire login event and pass in my new login form event right there. And then, so here I call fire login event, pass in the appropriate event object, and then in fire login event, I check that the listener is not null, and I call login perform, passing on the event and so now it works just the same as before. The only difference is I've created a separate little method just to do that bit of work of checking if the login listener is null or not and if it isn't um, calling the appropriate method and then I could call this in multiple points in my code if I needed to and I run this and let's just check that it still works. So there we go. And the other little thing that I want to mention is that you might want to have a instead of having a set login listener for example or a set such and such listener set action listener or whatever you like you might want to have an add method add login listener add action listener whatever you like and if you did that that would imply that you could have a list of uh, listeners which you're just adding to and the only difference would be that the subject the, ob the class that fires the event instead of having a, a single reference to a listener it could have let's say an array list of listeners and the fire method that fires the event would loop through that array list and call login performed in this case or call whatever method you specify in your interface on each of the listeners in the list in turn and that would be the only difference and remember if you have an array list it would be an array list of login listeners your interface type. So that's it for this tutorial and uh, to get your head around this if you find this at all puzzling I would say uh, type it out and see how it works. It, it all fits together you know um, perfectly but it can be a little intimidating to start with and, and the key to understanding it is just try getting it working and you don't have to make a whole kind of swing app. You could um, if you can rig up any kind of system where you've got a class where something happens after a certain length of time or in response to a button, button click or anything like that, um, then you can, you, you can use that as a framework to implement this system and you, you have one class 
in which something happens and fires an event and you need another class, an object to another class to be the listener uh, and you can just practice it and, and, and you will gradually understand it so that's it for this tutorial and I actually think that now having covered uh, so far the, the worst bits of MVC and the observer pattern we probably looked at the most complex stuff that we're ever going to see in this course we've got through the most difficult bit so if you're flagging at this point don't worry because it's uh, it's probably going to be easier from now on I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com and until next time happy coding <laughs>